This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The Brighter the Light by Mary Ellen Taylor Performed by Megan Tusing. Monday, January 17, 2022 10.15 p.m. 424 It was the number of miles between New York City and the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Seven and a half hours. That was the projected drive time. But it didn't account for the accident on the New Jersey Turnpike, the gridlock around the D.C. Beltway, or the new road construction miles before Norfolk. The calculation also didn't factor in a McDonald's stop in Delaware, hamburger and large Diet Coke, or the potty break in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Eleven days. The time it had been since Ivy Neal had left home to attend her grandmother's funeral. It was the post-New Year's lull at the restaurant, so no one had minded when she'd taken off two days. There was a hurried flight to Charlotte and then back up to Norfolk, followed by a 100-mile drive and a rental to the Outer Banks, and then the 30-minute funeral service. She'd seen friends and family, but the hugs had been quick and the conversation superficial. No time for the ex-boyfriend, the ex-friend who'd slept with him two months after she'd left for New York twelve years ago, their truly precious child, the hundreds of people who had loved Ruth, or a tour of Ruth's house. She'd flown back to New York, the sea air still clinging to her sweatshirt, and inquired about an extended leave from her job. Five seconds. How long it had taken her boss to reject her request for leave. One second for this last straw to break the camel's back and for her to quit. Three days to cut a deal with her landlord, sell her furniture, and pack up what remained. She had agreed to pay him the remaining two months on her lease once she sold the cottage or was making money again. He'd accepted, knowing money later was better than none at all. It wasn't that she didn't love her job or the city. God knew they'd endured a lot together. But it was time to return home and clean out Ruth's house. She owed this to Ruth. One thousand five hundred dollars. That was how much the 2005 van had cost her from the used car dealer. It was green and had worn tan seats and a radio that worked as long as you didn't hit a pothole, which was a neat trick on nearly 800 miles of I-95. Thirty-one dollars and three cents. It was the cost of gas and a large packet of M&Ms from the gas station before she crossed the right memorial bridge and left the mainland behind for the Outer Banks, the 200-mile-long chain of barrier islands stretching along the North Carolina coast. They'd been inhabited for a thousand years by native tribes drawn by the fertile waters, and since 1587 had been settled by Europeans. Ivy's grandmother Ruth had lived and died by numbers. She'd always been counting the days until opening season, the days until the season closed, the dollars and man-hours required to keep her hotel in the black, and the miles per hour of the winds when a hurricane loomed close to the shores. The last hurricane that hit in December was the Widowmaker, as Ruth had said on the phone. It ripped and soaked Ruth's hotel beyond the point of salvaging. Ivy had vowed to return home as soon as the Christmas rush was over. The wind whipped across the long bridge, forcing her to tighten her grip on the steering wheel to keep the tires aligned. Thick gray clouds unspooled over the bright full moon. Across the bridge, Ivy stopped at the Wendy's and ordered up two bacon cheeseburgers, fries, and a diet soda. There'd be no food at Ruth's cottage, so the extra burger could double as breakfast until she figured out what stores were open in the off-season. Ivy glanced in the van's rearview mirror, which tossed back a reflection of smudged mascara and a riot of black curls. As she stared at her likeness, Ruth's voice echoed, Your shift starts at seven. We've got three parties this weekend, so no time for friends. We made it through another season. She grabbed a handful of french fries and gobbled several as she pushed through the drive. It was another eight miles down the main road until the left turn by the mattress store at milepost eight took her down a side street to the beach road. A half mile south, she expected to see the seaside resort, but the barren leveled land threw her off, 
and without the landmark, she drove past Ruth's cottage. She was a half-mile gone when she realized her mistake and did a U-turn.